Well, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to Front Office Rocks and our webinar with our EagleSoft guru that we all love and adore, Andre. How are you doing this morning, Andre? I'm doing good. How's everything for you? Perfect. I actually just got back from ADOM, the national conference. So my voice kind of sounds that way because uh, I've been talking a lot, but it was an amazing conference. So um, we just had a great time there. I took my team and got to hang out with dental office managers. So it's been a, it's been a good week. How about you? Anything new in Andre world? Uh, you know, uh, this, this is my month where I try to slow down. So I was away last week. This week I was home. Um, next week I'm back to traveling. So <laughs> It's, I love this time of year. Perfect. I know, right? It's busy time of year. We're both talking about needing a couple, some time off in August. So yeah, for everyone, exactly. So for everyone that's here, if you haven't heard one of our webinars before or one of the Eagle Stuff training webinars that we're doing uh, or overview webinars that we're doing, we have been doing this for a while now as a way to just help offices learn a little bit more of different sections of EagleSoft. Um, we're not, we both, Andre and I feel you should go to support for, you know, Patterson and EagleSoft um, to learn, you know, everything about the software. But Andre and I both love EagleSoft, used it in offices, help other offices. And we thought these webinars would just be a, a way to give you tips and tricks and really kind of dive into each section of, of EagleSoft. So if you're here with us today, um, on the left-hand side, if you're live, you can ask questions along the way. What I will do is I will monitor the questions and then ask them as they flow well into Andre's presentation. Um, we also will you know, try to get to all the questions. We try to keep this to an hour. So if we don't get all your questions answered, you are more than welcome to reach out to me and I'll have contact information at the end. Um, with Front Office Rocks, so we can help you with any questions you have. And then, Andre, where else can they find you if they don't get their questions answered or we run out of time today? So uh, on Facebook uh, at Andre's EagleSoft Field Guide or my website, which is thecrewprocess.com. Perfect. So in order to kind of keep focused, we are going to just talk about chart today. Um, Andre is going to tell us the latest and greatest um, things going on with chart tips and tricks, um, how to make your chart more efficient, how to make your team more efficient, um, and then, you know, better communication between the back and the front. A lot of offices say that they, you know, use the software to communicate, to treatment plan, to um, make sure that we know what's going on with the patients, but we're not always using it completely or efficiently. So that's really what we're going to focus on today. So if you have questions, please make sure you put them on the left-hand side. I will monitor them. Um, and at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Andre. He is going to, I believe, take control of this and either put up EagleSoft or put up a PowerPoint because he has some stuff he wants to tell us about. So Andre, I'm going to, here we go. Andre is taking over from here. And I will do my best to get all the questions answered for you guys. Let's see. Tell me when you see my screen I load. Just, we can there see we it. Go. Do you see what's up on the screen? Good. There we go. Look so, at those little emojis. There we go. That's us. <laughs> so what I what I always like to start with is, you know, if if I don't tell you the background of the charting, then it's very difficult to talk about where we're going to go with charting. So I always start with this. You know, the charting starts with what we learned in school, which is the blue and red pencil. And most people use EagleSoft the way they use that blue and red pencil. The reds are the things that are proposed or, or problems is the way I kind of look at it. And the blues are the things that were uh, completed by the office. And if you see on the left side of the screen, um, those are the colors that EagleSoft sets up by default. And these are kind of the colors that I see in the chart almost all the time. So if you look at a typical dental chart before computers, this is exactly what we looked at. And it told us what were the problems and what were the solutions. But this got really messy over time. So what we have to figure out a way to do is to take this idea and interpret it in a digital format. So one of the things I like to do is to take it to the next level by doing this. I think about it like checkers and chess. So it's the same board, but it's a completely different game. So when we're using charting, let's think about the board is exactly the same. The teeth, you know, the tooth chart, the odontograph is exactly the same. But how do we make it different? So I like to use the color for existing services to be gray. And the reason I use that is it's just like, you know, it's like a battleship. It's sitting off the coast. It's gray. Everything's fine. The problem is 
when something that is existing is a problem, so say a uh, crown that the porcelain is broken off of, um, that becomes a defective restoration, and I color it hot pink. That way I can tell that battleship has some issues, all right? The next step would be to look at, oh, and I use, I, I shop a lot, so that's where I got the pink color from, <laughs> all right? Uh, beyond that, if I look at conditions, conditions are the things that happen to patients other than treatment. So these are impactions, fractions, um, abscesses, um, those kinds of things, the things that happen naturally, quote unquote. And I color those orange like a cone that sits along the side of the road, all right? Makes sense for me because I constantly look at that. If I see an impacted wisdom tooth, I'm constantly looking to check and see if everything is okay, all right? The next step would be those things that are proposed. I use green um, because green to me means go, and because I sat at the front desk for such a long time, green means money to me. So that's why I use green and I don't use red. Uh, you know, and there's some debate about that, but I can win that debate anytime because I can increase case acceptance using green. So I use red to mean proposed services that are rejected or stop. So if somebody said, I'm never gonna get that root canal, then that's a red line in that tooth. And I can tell that person was proposed a service that they told me no to. So I wanna tell you these colors because when we look at some of the things like referred services, which typically aren't even marked in the chart, I propose them, but I refer them, and then they look brown because I want my implant that I refer to look like that. Oh, that's I'm great. Doing the crown. Yeah, I'm doing the crown, but somebody else is doing the implant, and the reason they use brown is because it's crap that I'm not gonna do in my office. You know, it's really funny for anybody who's a client of mine, um, this ties in just so uh, what I do with the colors of appointments. So primary appointments are green, which is the large appointments because that means money. And then tertiary appointments, which is no dollar value, is brown because it's the same thing you're saying here. So that ties yeah, right with what I teach in scheduling. Perfect. So, and, and for me, it's all about keeping it simple. So that's the way, I mean, I, I think in simple terms, it makes it easier to do everything. So here's the colors again, just for recap. Now, now that the, you know the colors, let me show you what a chart looks like. So we're gonna switch out of this, and I'm gonna go over to my Eaglesoft. I'm gonna click on my chair to choose a patient. All right, and by the way, hopefully everybody is using this clinical screen to do your charting and not the front desk. So I'm gonna choose my first person in my list, and say use. Their name goes up on the wall. I get my indicators to let me know things about the patients, and we talked about that in the last webinar, and I'm gonna open up the patient's chart. There we go. So, remember the colors that I talked about? Can you tell what things are to be done, what things the patient presented with, those things that are conditions, those things that we've charged out or completed, those things that are referred out. It makes it really easy when you can open up a chart and be able to tell everything that you need to know about a patient by just quickly looking. And my idea is this, you know, your, your chart needs to be like a billboard on the highway. If you're driving my normal, my, I shouldn't say what I normally drive, but let's just call it 65 miles an hour you should be able to read a billboard as you pass it. You know, if you're not being able to read that billboard, there's something wrong with the way it's presented. So we need to be able to read these charts. So I can tell quickly that that is a referred extraction because I use a normal X when it's extraction I'm doing in the office. I use a straight line to be a referred extraction. So that when I was, the patient, go ahead, what did you say? Gonna have you ask, ask, go over it again too. So green means proposed. Proposed. Uh, I don't see any red on there, but red would be proposed, but they rejected it. Yep. Uh, gray is they walked in existing. Existing, yep. And then what and was the pink? Hot pink? Hot pink is existing that is defective. Okay. And then blue. Right. Blue is completed, so we've charged that out. Got it. All Great. Right. Give an example. You know, this is a typical thing. We see somebody comes in with a lingual bar. And at some point, that lingual bar is snapped or there's a piece of it that's disconnected. All right, you know, we usually get those emergency calls, something sticking me. So let's just right click and edit that service and go to their retained bar and say that this actually is defective. 
network is defective. And most people don't even realize that exists. So I'm going to say it's an existing service that is defective. And now you see my lingual bar? Yes. So I can tell that they have a lingual bar that is defective. All right. So it makes it a whole lot easier to be able to chart and be able to see what's going on in the patient's mouth. All right. Now, a lot of people say, well, I want to know the difference between a composite and an amalgam. Well, we know that that right there is probably not going to be an amalgam. All right. Right. <laughs> and if that, if that is an existing amalgam or composite, for one, the patient's in your chair, so you should be able to tell. And for two, if it's in the mouth and fine, what do we care? You know, it. We can chart, and I can chart it differently, but why would you even care? It's there, it's fine, and you're not gonna do anything about it, let it be. Oh, hold on one second. Are you switching back? It's also possible. Hold on, everybody. Can everybody hear me? If you can hear me, let me know. They're getting some storms on the East Coast, so I'm wondering if, yeah. uh, there you are. We lost you for a second. I can hear you now. Okay, good. But we can't see your screen though. So I have a question while your screen's coming back. Actually, somebody already yep. has a question for you. They want to know um, where can we put diagno diagnosis for recommended treatment? Um, and I, I said, I haven't had enough coffee today. What they mean is treatment that's recommended. Where do we put the why, such as mesial decay? Okay. So the why, a couple of reasons. You could, I mean, you can see it right here. It's really hard to tell, but in number 13, there is a little shadow on the, the uh, mesial occlusal of that tooth. Now, EagleSoft is set up to do uh, a right click and add a watch, all right? And all you right. could type Andre, a note in here and you could, yep. We're gonna pause you. We actually, nobody can see your screen at the moment. So can you jump okay. up and down, do 14 jumping jacks and we'll see if we can fix it? Yep. I don't and know if there's. Maybe if I sh stop sharing and share again. Yeah, maybe. It says, please stand by, so. Just so everybody knows, we have people from all over. We have people from Canada, North Dakota, Virginia, New York, Mo Montana, Michigan. I'm, I'm loving this. This is like a, it's like a big dental front office meeting all at once. There we go. And now we can see your screen. So now if you just cool. want to get eagle. All right. Now let's try that again. Can you, the okay. question again, how do you put in there the why? All right. So if I right click on a tooth, add a watch. I can say that I'm watching the mesial incisal or mesial occlusal of that tooth, the mesial incisal. Make a note or diagnosis and say, okay. What that does is it puts that, puts that yellow bar on the tooth. The problem with that is if I remove that watch, all right, so we fix it. If I remove the watch, it's gone. If I view the watch, it's an extra step to go look at it. So EagleSoft actually gives you a condition called watch. So if I right click on that tooth and edit that tooth, there is a condition of watch on that tooth. And I've marked that I'm watching the mesial occlusal on that tooth. And that will stay there until I put a restoration on that tooth. Okay. So that is the better way to do that to me. Same exact situation, but now I can visually see what I'm watching. I can see down in the ledger, the watch on 13 mesial occlusal. All right. And that could stay there in forever if I wanted it to. All right. We have somebody who says that okay. every time they put a watch on a tooth, it goes black, not yellow. Is that a, something they need to fit? I mean, there was a way to fix that? Yep. So they need to go up to File and Preferences and then the Chart tab. And I'll bet you that their watches, see that watch is, is black. Great. And I was, my next question was going to be, how do they change the colors to match yours if they like it? So this is the same yep. place. Okay. File preferences chart, and you can change them here. All right. And one of the things that's important, if you change them, first of all, you need to have a staff meeting so everybody knows what's going on. <laughs> all right. Um, you need to just, you know, you, this, this is not permanent. So if you decide tomorrow that the, the pink is a little too dark and the blue is a little too light or whatever, you can change it the next day and everything will fix. So don't worry about being stuck with something once you choose it. Um, the other thing is you want to make sure that you're not using this checkbox, which says use service colors on completed. That needs to be unchecked. You want to use solid fills. All right. And oh. then, you know, you can pick the colors as you want. 
Awesome. So I would suggest even in the beginning, if people are changing to yours, to use that little graph that you showed, which is like green and, you know, go or whatever, and then put that up around the office. So everybody knows as they're learning the colors. Yep. And that, that's it. That's on the Facebook group. You can download that printed on a color printer and have it, have that chart for everybody too. Okay. So for those that are listening, it's Andre's Eagle Soft Field Guide. Um, group on Facebook. It's only on Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, join. Um, so I have somebody who said, so put a watch as a condition and then also put as diagnosed treatment. Well, it's, it's up to the office. I mean, some people will add the watch. Some people will put in the notes. Now, remember, if you add a note to a tooth, do you see the little N right there next to tooth number four? See the N? Do I have kind an of I for it? Yeah. The diagnosis should be in your progress notes and it should be attached to the tooth. So I should see that in my notes. I should be able to right click, go to the history of that tooth and read the notes. And it says right there, number four is doomed, right in my notes. There we go. Okay, so that's good. that's the way we'll put notes. Um, and like I said, I'm not a big fan of this, this yellow bar because uh, you know, I had a client who put all their Diagnodent scores in that watch area and then when they removed the watch they removed all their diagnosis and then it's gone yeah. so can you show us again how did you set the watch the way you did it versus the how do you set it again so you want to go into your watches the, the condition of watch see my i actually put a period in front of watch because it's one of the most commonly used procedures that i do so i put a period watch all right and then i edited this so that it's on surface and that my surface drawing is surface restoration. Now I've made mine a little different because I have a custom drawing, but you can just use the surface restoration and then it will be able, you'll be able to choose a surface as you show your watches. Excellent, that's great. Okay, great. So I think if we answered all the questions, you can continue. <laughs> yep. Well, and now the other the other thing that you'll you'll notice that's different about the, my layout. Of course, you've got me peeking out of the chart there too. But my chart is customized, and that's why I put me on the, the the picture there, so you can tell. My chart is fully customized with custom drawings, very clear, so that I know what's going on. This is something that you know I've done for you know twenty something years in EagleSoft to make sure that I can use the pra the, the the chart better. All right, one second. Can you try it again? Because yep. we lost your screen. This is okay. going to be our technically challenged one. This is the benefit of doing this cross country with weather issues. Um, uh, we had you up until you're you're showing us the custom screen. Yep. So can you can you see my screen? No, nope, not yet. It says please stand okay. by. So we'll try to. There we go. Now we're seeing it again. So we may have to do this on a little bit. But luckily, yeah. everybody watching this, this webinar is free. So you know, you got to take you what go. you want. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Now we see you again. All right, so cool. show us the customized screen. Okay, so as an example, number four is an all ceram crown. Number three is a PFM. I can tell because this one's pixelated and that one's solid. This is an Emacs crown, all right? And to some people, they might say, you know what, that makes absolutely no sense to us and that makes no difference to us and why would I do that? Well, I'll tell you. Because if I walk in a room and I see this abscess on that crown with that Emacs or Bruxer or whatever you might be using, it might take you three hours to cut that crown off to do the endo. So it does make a difference in a lot of practices to be able to tell what's going on with that patient. So I love having that as, as an option. And it's not easy, but, you know, if you play with it for a little while, you can do it. Um, All right. And there's a lot, there's a lot of info on that. We lost your screen again, so uh, let's try it again. Let's try again. We'll go back here. Stop sharing. Okay, there we go. Now you're, well, no, hold on. Still not, it's just the, you're back on the way. I wonder, you guys having storms over there on the East Coast, aren't you? Are you? No, I'm not. Huh? Nice and sunny out. Sunny and well, miserable in Pennsylvania. <laughs> All right, we can see your screen again, so. Okay, so I'm gonna just show you a, a, a quick way to custom uh, custom drawing, all right? In the chart, I mean, in the clinical area, we're gonna go to list, we're gonna go to draw types, all right? And you can see I've got hundreds of custom drawings in here, 
All right, but I'm gonna let I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own custom drawing. So say you want to create a drawing that's specific to a Ceric crown or to a all ceram crown. Just edit the existing Eaglesoft crown. All right, it says we're going to build a custom drawing from this. All right, and here is the basis you're going to start with. It says crown custom, and just take your eraser. All right, make your eraser a little smaller, and just stripe the occlusal. So now you're going to know anything that looks like that is a Ceric crown or a all ceram crown. You don't have to be as fancy as mine. They just do it for every single crown. And I'm just making stripes. And now, anytime you use this for your drawing, this will be your custom drawing for an all ceram crown. It takes you know, 10 seconds to do them all. You've got to do 16 teeth because you've got to do them across the, across the uh, half of an arch. Um, and now you're going to have a custom crown that you can attach to your code the 2740s and be able to charge out and be able to see your crown a little different on your chart. So do you just leave it crown custom? You don't name it anything else in that when you do that? You can name it whatever you want, but you know, it, it, I always have mine as custom. So I have mine called, mine called custom crown striped. Okay. And that's what it looks like. Fancy. All right. That's yeah. great. I didn't realize you and could I, do that. Yeah, it, it takes hours to do, but you know what? Once you once you have it, it's well worth it. So that's how you do a custom drawing so that in the end, you've got an Emacs crown as opposed to a PFM as opposed to a, a also RAM crown. That's awesome. Can you show yeah. us, I think we did already, but someone how to set up referred out color, referral out colors. Is that going to be okay. back in the preferences? Back in preferences. Under chart. There is my referred brown. All right. Now, let me do a quick one to just show you. And I'm going to, if, any, if nobody knows this, you can actually switch from one patient to another by using a little drop down here. Drop down and say change patient. All right. And I'm going to go to this patient who I know is a perio patient. It's got some extractions. My computer's going to go slow, but here comes the chart. I think everybody wants a little Andre popped up in their chart like that too. <laughs> so easy way now, just from the colors that we could, what we talked about and with having one, one or two custom drawings, I can tell number one is referred out for extraction. Number two was extracted when the patient presented. Number three is an extraction we want to do. Number four is a congenitally missing tooth. Number five is an orthodontic extraction. See the little arrows to tell me that my space is closed. So same outcome, which is a missing tooth or an extracted tooth, but quickly be able to tell what, you know, what and why it's happening. That's awesome. That's really, yeah. and you're saying, I mean, somebody, it's going to take hours, but then look at how easily you can tell what's going on. Well, the refer takes two seconds because you're just making a straight line. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so many people say, oh, I hate the X. You know, I just want to hide the tooth. And on second and third molars, you can hide a tooth. But what if that tooth was congenitally missing? I mean, I work with uh, United Cerebral Palsy, and there's a lot of, you know, situations where a patient has congenitally missing teeth, and that tells us a story about, you know, growth patterns and things like that. You have patients that have cleft palates to be able to tell that there's congenitally missing teeth. It tells a story, and it's important. Sure. So once a patient completes the treatment that was referred out, should the chart be adjusted when the correspondence comes back that it's done? Yeah. So I would actually edit that service and I would then mark that as an existing service. And now I can see a gray X here as opposed to, I mean, a gray line as opposed to a gray X. That's super cool. Other, yeah. The other thing that's important, if you're referring services, let's go back to our first patient. All right. And let's look at the referred implant that we did here. Hopefully my chart will come back up. Let me close that. For everybody watching this, you should have your doctors watch this. Because if you're a front office or whatever, I would have anybody in the back uh, watch this and just learn, watch how Andre's clicking around and doing stuff to the chart. Yep. So here is a referred implant. Now imagine that came back and it should be gray in my chart, but let's just, what should really happen is if you really want to have smart doc or a very smart doctor, you should attach the implant information 
to your imaging. So if I click on that tooth, there is my custom abutment label, there is my implant bottle, there's the letter from the specialist, there's the cone beam slice that came back from the specialist. Because I clicked on that tooth, my image is attached to that tooth, and now I can see that, wow, that's a Branamark system. All right, what size is that implant? Let's open that up and see, oh wow, it's a 3.3 millimeter implant. And all that information is attached to that tooth so that I don't need to go anyplace else other than in my chart to be able to see, okay, here's the letter like you just asked. Here's the letter from the specialist that came back that said, we finally did that implant on that patient. You can go ahead and start doing the restoration on them. So for those, that don't, know, for those that don't know how to do that, can you show us how you would attach images and, and scan docs, smart docs yep. to it? Yep. I'm going to use my same drop down. I'm going to go into imaging instead of smart doc. All right, and I'm gonna do a new exam. And let's just use the Panorex mount. Right click, acquire from your scanner and scan that letter right into this field and connect the tooth number. Got it, down at the bottom. Okay, and are the images only attached if we have certain versions of EagleSoft? And like, I know EagleSoft 20 is coming out, so anything about images with that? No. It's, 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 yeah, all versions that included advanced imaging. Now, if somebody's using uh, DEXIS or they have some other third-party software they're using for imaging, then you're not going to have this integration. But if you're using EagleSoft Advanced Imaging, you've already got the, the capability to do this. Okay. What about Smart Docs? Can you attach a Smart Doc with, by? Um... No. Okay. Nope, you can't attach, and that's again, that's why it, it doesn't make my docs smart. So that, I, I hardly ever use Smart Doc when it comes to clinical information because I want my doctors to stay in this screen and never have to leave it. Okay, so for those of us who now realize Smart Docs can't attach to a number, how did you do the letter again from the specialist? Okay, so this letter again was just scanned in through imaging, advanced imaging. And I actually have mounts that are set up that are called the scan document. Okay. Right click, acquire from my scanner. Scans in, attach the tooth number. You know, I'm at, you know, if somebody came in and they had all all their third molars extracted, I'd connect all four thirds. That's awesome, because then the doctors don't have to click back and forth between Smart Docs and and the chart. Exactly. Yeah, and the worst thing about Smart Doc is sometimes it becomes a junk drawer where there's just so much information in there you can't find what you're looking for. Um, this. The doctors, all they have to do is just click on the tooth. And we we both worked at the front desk. You know, when the doctors walk out and they go, did we get that letter back from Dr. Jones? We just go, yeah. click on the tooth, doc. <laughs> click yeah. on the tooth, doc. <laughs> now, is there any way to transfer if we've got um, letters in Smart Docs to images or we would have to go back and do it the way you just showed nope. us? No, they're there, they're there. They're, they're not going to be able to move. Okay. So for you anybody... Know, as, of, yeah, as of August 1st, they're going to be attached to imaging. Anything before that is not going to be. Perfect. And then you just have to retrain your doctors going forward just to let them know, click on the tooth, click on the tooth. Yeah. And Perfect. I'll tell you, the doctors, the doctors I have that use that, they, I mean, they're like, this is so much better because I don't have to leave the screen that I've been working in for years. And even if they're looking for a PA, it's in the same place. It's in advanced imaging. That's the same place. Yeah. And I, and one of the things I found, Andre, I don't know if you have any thought on it or whatever, is just we, we trans, um, converted from another software, I won't mention the name, to EagleSoft. And it really takes a getting used to to just look at chart. Um, we were used to lines and letter or words and, and, and this, if you can really get your doctors trained at just, if you put the right information in and get them to look at it and just look at the colors and stuff, it all reads out exactly what you need right in front of you. Yeah, and, and honestly, the hardest transition when I've trained people on this is to get used to the green over the red. And usually what I tell them is, don't worry about it. Go back to red. Don't fight it. Just use red. And it, right. it, whatever works for you works for you. Uh, it, 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 you know, as long as you get to the beach, that's the way I see it. Right, exactly. Okay, we're all caught up on questions. So you have more that you want to show us. So one of the things I want you to also realize is a lot of people have added things to the condition list. And that would be a good idea, but some of the things that they're adding to conditions are things like implants, which isn't a condition. Um, missing tooth is a condition when it's congenitally missing, but if the tooth was previously extracted, that is an extraction that is existing. It's not a condition, all right? 
So we have to be really careful because otherwise you're going to have a, a mouthful of orange extractions, which really aren't conditions. So that's one of the things that I kind of have to get past when I'm working with offices. The other thing is, you know, a lot of offices that I work with are perio-focused, which is great. And they want to see what's happening from a soft tissue standpoint in the same chart. Well, that's easy. Down here, there's a button that call, that's called show what. And a lot of people don't even know that this exists. So you can hit show what, and now I'm going to include perio. I don't need pockets, and I don't need bleeding, but I want to see where the gingival margin and the mucogingival junction are. And now you're going to see a better story being told. You know why I haven't replaced this defective crown? It's because look at this perio defect that's happening up here. For me to replace this crown means some grafting and bone augmentation. There's a lot that has to be done in order to replace this crown. And guess what? Maybe the patient's not ready for that, and we're not ready for it either. And that's why I haven't replaced the crown. So the story becomes a lot clearer when you see something like that. And all I've done is just include the gingival margin and the mucogingival junction in the, in the heart tissue chart. That's great. Yeah, I love that. And, and I'm going to show you a little secret here that nobody notices on my chart. But once you start getting used to it, if you look at number 28 here, you notice that 28 has a little symbol right there. You see it on either side of the tooth? Yes. That lets me know that tooth is mobile. So I'm going to actually hit the, my zoom, and I can zoom in on 28 and be able to see, if you see up there in the corner, you can see that there's little mobile lines. So I have a lot of offices, again, perio focused, who say, you know what, I want to be able to see mobility. Well, there you go, I can see it. That's great. I don't think I've ever known there was a zoom button there. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I know. And it's hard to use. You saw how it kind of, it's weird. And usually you shouldn't have to zoom in on something. But with the larger monitors, it, you know, zoom tends to happen really, have work really well too. Okay. So I'm going to switch patients again and go to another patient, and I'm going to go into our typical like implant case because we have a lot of this where the, you have a patient that's got implants like an all-on-four case, and here's a really wild implant case. So I can tell this patient's got bone grafting. All right, they've got a, a natural tooth with a crown that's actually uh, that probably would never happen. But here's a a four implant deal with a natural tooth holding a bridge that's and this is all connected this is not a typical <laughs> situation but you should be able to see these things and know what's going on with your patients and understand what's happening from a restorative standpoint but you know if this was something where this you know this patient presented this way but maybe the you know the, the one of these implants is loose you should be able to tell it and be able to understand the story from you know from the patient's perspective uh, let's go to a patient that's got Invisalign. I'm going to go here. And again, these all these all these charts tell me a story. So here's somebody with a lingual bar where it's broken off at one space. All right, they've had ortho extractions. See my orthodontic extractions. All right, um, and they've had bonding and bracketing in the past. See the brackets on these teeth? Yep. So I can tell this patient has had brackets. Now, do you notice the invisible line right there? Yep. So they need Invisalign. Ah, All right. like it. Yeah. So the beauty of that is you know, I can tell that, you know, this is a patient who we've proposed, again, green is my color for proposed, we've proposed Invisalign, um, and they've had ortho in the past. This is your typical patient, all right? The one on the other side is I can tell that they've completed with Invisalign treatment. Obviously, it wouldn't be on the same person, but I did this so you could see. With the lines through it, I can tell that they've actually completed the Invisalign in our office. So we can't see that super well. I don't know what kind of issues we're having. So what's the one on the right have that shows it's completed? It, it shows the same uh, lines, but it just has okay. a, a horizontal, I mean, a vertical line going through it. Got it. Okay, so that shows yeah. completed. Okay. Yeah. And again, you can do anything you want in your chart, but for me to be able to look at a chart and be able to tell what's going on is, is ridiculously important. Um, and I'll give you another one. Offices now who are doing airway. I, I made up a patient so I could show airway studies. All right. So here's a patient, and I can tell over here in the corner that, that they have had a sleep study and they're wearing a CPAP. All right. Now, I can tell that they have a sleep guard or snore guard. Same ideas with Invisalign. They've had orthodontic extractions in the past, which is typical for somebody who has uh, airway issues. 
right there, I can tell that they're wearing a CPAP or using a CPAP, and they have a Mullen potty of three, Mullen potty score of three. And they can so what, do you, what does that say right there? We can we see the orange circle, but I don't know if anyone else, it's a little hard to see what's yeah. in there. Here, let me see if I can zoom in on it. See the M3 up there? Yes. And if I go over here, it says CPAP over 24. Okay. Now, how did so you... In the circle. How did you do that and the Invisalign lines we're getting questions of? The okay, CPAP. so I'll, do, I'll show you how to do the Invisalign. So we're going to go to draw types, and we're going to do a new drawing, and we're going to base it on the tooth. All right, and let's clear what's there. And all I did was just take this little drawing right here, make it as small as possible, and just drew a straight line like that under tooth number one. And if I could, let me clear that. I'm going to go all the way across. That's it. And then I Great. clear all the other teeth. So I, I just put that on tooth number one, clear the rest of them, and now I connect that drawing to the Invisalign code. And now I've got a straight line under number one. Can you show us, because I don't think you've shown us yet, how do you attach it to the code? Okay. I don't want to save that, and I'll go right into my list services, and that's a D8. Here's my Invisalign code. Edit my code. Most important, you've got to connect it to the tooth. And in chart setup, right, there's my custom Invisalign drawing connected to the tooth so and to the code. That's great. Yep. Cool. How about the CPAP, or you, you have the, the, the number and the stuff in the middle? Right. So the CPAP is actually three drawings. So the CPAP is, the, I did actually a condition. So there's a condition called CPAP user, all right, which put the CPAP word in there. I have my Malin Potty scores that puts that M1 through 4 in there. And then I have an airway constriction, which actually puts the actual circle in the drawing. It's actually three drawings stacked up to show that that patient's got airway issues, the airway constriction is an, is an M3, and they're currently wearing a CPAP. It's three different drawings. I mean, it's not easy, uh, but those are, like I said, the, the people I work with in office, I actually just, I take all those hundreds of drawings that you saw and just drop them into their, into their, their database. And again, for people who want to see this closer or whatever, he has this in past, you, you've given this information in past comments on your uh, Facebook group, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lots of, lots of times. Okay. Yep. Awesome. I, I'm just, I actually, I don't know about you guys, I'm kind of floored on, I didn't realize you could do all this stuff. This is, and then to have somebody show us how to do it um, and give us examples is great. All right. What else you got, Andre? Well, and, you know, here's, here's how I made the transition. When, when we made the choice to go chartless, I mean, and in our, in our practice, it was 1989 when we made the choice to go chartless. My doctor said, I will only do it if I can duplicate what I do on paper on this computer. And that was the task that I was given. So I had to find a way to make it happen um, and just created all these drawings and figured out a way to make it happen um, wow. and, and really keep them from coming up to my desk and asking questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, was, that was the bottom line way of fixing things, you know. Um, go ahead. It's got screen sharing interrupted. So go ahead and uh, and do it again, reset it. And, and honestly, yeah. that's the reason we do all this is to try to keep the doctors in the back. So, exactly. you know, take it a few hours. most productive. Yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then when they know more, we can communicate um, communicate better between the front and the back. So um, while we're doing this, while Andre's showing us, I, I know he has one more trick up his sleeve for sure. Um, I was thinking about different things for our next webinar. I'm, I'm looking at things right now, thinking about Perio. I'm thinking about the IntelliCare alerts. I'm thinking about um, more in chart code. So if you guys have ideas and stuff, jot them down while Andre's um, uh, showing us his tricks. All right. Yeah. We can see the screen and again. Yeah, I'm glad you said codes because, you know, a big part of the charting is making sure that these buttons are set up properly with codes that the office actually uses. I mean, I go into so many offices and they'll still have an onlay and an inlay button on these choices, and they typically never do inlays, maybe an onlay every now and then. So, you know, let's clean this list up to make them work the way you guys work because you can see I've got a, a guard button with all my different guards on here. And I've got an ortho button with all my Invisalign codes. So if you're going to be doing you know, using this, utilize it the way you want to utilize it so that it's fast and easy. 
Perfect. Why don't we do that for our next webinar? So then that way we can get kind of chart uh, covered, you know, completely finished and for everybody. Cool. Yeah, we'll talk about service codes and, and the quick picks, which is what this is called. So yeah, that's a good Perfect. one. All right. Perfect. Uh, All right. I'm well, gonna, yeah, I'm going to go through one that is a typical hard one for uh, for a lot of offices to do a chart where you have a patient who has um, let's just call it a, a full denture that needs to be done and maybe we're, we're going to do an immediate denture so what typically happens is we go okay this tooth this tooth this tooth this one this one need to be extracted all right so we're going to propose those extractions and then we say okay and then we're going to do upper all, and we're gonna be doing a full immediate denture, and there's the immediate denture, and that's gonna be proposed. Well, Can you maximize, we the point, maximize, your screen, maximize the screen a little bit? We can't see it like full, okay. you know, the EgoSoft part of it. Uh, is that better? Uh, there we go, perfect, that's better, much okay. better. So what happened was, by doing the denture second after the extractions, you can't tell which teeth have to be extracted. The oh, same right. way, if we're going to do an implant retained denture, if you do the implants first, all right, we say, okay, those are going to be implants that actually we're going to propose, but we're going to refer those out because we don't do implants here. All right, and then we say, and then there's going to be a lower denture on that. I know this is not the right code, but this is going to be a lower denture. Guess what? We don't see the denture. We don't see the implants. So what needs to happen, and I'm going to just go back into the chart without saving it. What needs to happen is you need to do a uh, all lower denture that we propose, and then you go back and then you show where the implants are going to go, and then <laughs> you go back again. And what I've done is actually created a drawing for my um, implant locators so that I can still see. So this is a, a code that I made up. All right connected to a drawing, and now I can see, all right, the implant locators, all right, and I can actually do some other stuff by showing um, where the implant denture is going to go. Uh, and I, didn't, I always forget where I put these. Sometimes I move things around and hide them for myself. But I can actually <laughs> show where the implant, the dentures are going to be so that, you know, it doesn't hide what I'm looking for. That's excellent. That's really yeah. great. And you know, there should be something that one of, one of the interesting things is I was in an office recently, and the office did an implant proposed, and then they did a custom abutment, which is right there, abutment custom. All right, and then they did a crown. I'm just going to use the PFM button. Okay, so I can see that little green implant custom abutment. Most offices don't have a drawing for that. This office that I went to, we added that, that custom drawing and we opened up a chart of a patient. And the doctor right. said, wow, they're still green. How come they're still green? We charged this patient out for the implant, the custom abutment, and the crown. And the administrator in the office said, oh, I thought a custom abutment was the crown. Oh, and no. So the, for the entire time the office had been doing implants, she had never charged out the custom abutment, assuming that a custom abutment was the crown. Oh, geez. That's the, that, yeah, that's the importance of teaching and training. Can you fix the screen again? We're, um, we lost yep. you there, but uh, okay. I don't think you showed us anything. But yeah, that's important that, we, that the team is trained so that we're billing out and charging appropriately to the patients and to the insurance. Yeah, uh, and I mean, they had lost you know, I, tens of thousands of dollars uh, because, and the only way the doctor knew is because that little green line showed up on this patient, and there must have been five or six custom abutments that were never charged out. Yes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, we have no other questions here. Do you have anything else you want to show us? Because, and we're, and we're going to, like we said, we're going to do quick fix and stuff next time in service codes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, this is the, the meat and potatoes of it, and a lot of it just has to do with. You know, open up a patient's chart. This is the task that I give our every office. Open up a patient's chart, take a look, and see if the chart represents what we know about that patient. And if it doesn't, then dig deeper and figure out how we can make it better for the patient and for the office, because we should be able to see everything that's going on.
Yeah, and I think it's important to, we just assume, you know, somebody who knows EagleSoft knows EagleSoft, but if you hire somebody who they do it different in other um, offices, um, then you've got to make sure that people understand what they're looking at. I mean, this is, you know, it's important because we want to make sure that we're getting the patients the treatment they need. Uh, we had a question about how you did that abutment drawing. You want to show us that? Okay. Yep, I'll show you. That's an easy one. So, go up to the list. And everybody on his group should join his group because he's got all this amazing information. So, yep. And we're going to base it on a tooth. All right. Clear this one out. And just that same little box tool that I used before, just draw a box so where a uh, custom abutment would sit. And that's it. Just do it 16 times. So you've got to do it for every every tooth in one side of an arch, I mean, in, in one side of a, a mouth. So, you just do the box. Save it and connect it to your custom abutment code. There you go. And retroactively, it'll go back to every custom abutment you've ever done and connect it. That's great. That's great. I didn't realize you could do all of this, so that's awesome. Um, I have a question. Can you think of any reason why the crown would be yellow on a patient on one computer, but we cannot see it yellow on the same patient on a different computer? We check the settings on both computers, and we cannot figure it out. Okay, so in preferences, this is probably why. If you go to the chart tab, you may have use service colors for completed. And if that's the case, you may have yellow for your completed service color for crowns. So that may be why. It may be a simple thing like that. What I tell people to do is just take a screenshot of this and then go to each computer and make sure they're all on the same page. Because as you can see from this little asterisk, that is a workstation specific thing. So you could have different colors in there or, or different looks in almost every office. So the office asterisk, is, it's workstation specific. And if it doesn't have an asterisk, then it's um, across the network. Exactly, universal. Okay. Any other possibilities? Because she's saying they, they've tried that and that's, that's okay. Is there any other things they should look at? Um, check the ghost. No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the, the best thing to do is, you know, go to that workstation, have, have Patterson dial in and find out why. Um, you know, that, that's always my, sec my, my first step. If something's acting weird and it shouldn't act that way, call support, make sure they get on the phone with you and, and dial into that computer and check it. My go-to whenever somebody had something wrong with computers, I tell them to reboot because that's what they always tell me first, right? Did you reboot? It wouldn't probably fix this problem, but always try to reboot. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Perfect. All right. Great. Is there, while you're in this preferences screen, is there anything else that we should be conscious of that um, is important that you point out? Well, I mean, I, if you, if you guys just look at how mine's set up, this is how I set up every single office I go to. I mean, I've been in more than 5,000 practices. So uh, this is pretty much how I set up everybody's practice. This is my default. Um, the only thing that's different is um, the colors. You know, if you change your colors to the way I have my color set, yeah. there wouldn't be any difference. Um, this is kind of my default. And, you know, when we start talking about Perio, we'll, we'll look at it differently. But this is my default and how I, I typically do things. When I do this, I set all my workstations this way. And then I go back to the hygiene-specific operatories. And I check my mucogingival junction and my gingival margin so that those things show by default in the hygiene ops. It's a little too much in the, the, the restorative ops. We can always turn them on if we want to, but I like having those on in the hygiene ops. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Well, I think this was, I know we had technical problems, so I'm really, you know, I'm sorry for that, you guys. It's technology, technology. You guys know how it goes. Um, but I really think that this was um, really good. I mean, I learned a lot and, you know, I, I didn't even realize this. So um, thank you so much. Um, I want to um, just remind you guys that Andrea and I are here to help. So if you have questions, please reach out to us. Um, I am Front Office Rocks. We do online front office training as low as $5 a day. You can train your team. We're here to give you guys content, ideas, help you with things. We want to be a resource for the dental front office. And then, um, you know, we're available online. We've got videos, tutorials, and we bring experts like Andre there's me and Andre when we were in Jamaica, um, to you guys. So please let us know. I know we had technical problems. I'm sorry about that. But please let us know how you liked the webinar um, at the end, if you get a survey from us and other ideas.
I think we've decided our next one's going to be on quick picks and service codes. So another chart one. Um, Andre, do you have anything you want to let them know about what you have going on? Or um, well, again, yeah, I know for, for the end of 2018, if there's anybody who's looking for some in-office help, I would be happy to come in and help you guys actually incorporate some of this charting. Uh, just hit my website and you can find out some more information. Perfect. So on that note, I always promise that we're going to keep it at an hour. So I want to make sure you guys get back to um, getting all excited about this and you know getting this all figured out in your charts. So thank you, Andre, again for joining us. Um, thank you everybody on the, on this webinar and anybody who watches it later, please stay in touch with us, reach out to us. Um, our next one is scheduled in late September. So we're going to give you guys the month of August off so you can get into Eaglesoft and customize it and keep up with our webinars. And then we will talk to everybody in September. So thank you, Andre. Have a nice rest of your summer. You too. Talk to you soon. Thanks. All right. Bye everybody. Have a nice day.